Atheists will try to use a clever trick in an attempt to avoid the burden of proof. Atheists will say, well, I'm not saying that there is no God, but what I'm saying is I simply lack belief in a God. I haven't been given sufficient evidence yet, so I'm withholding belief. What they do is then they set up their own personal subjective standard of evidence, and they're there able to deny any evidence that doesn't meet that personal standard even if it's not objectively reasonable and then when you ask them about their position what they would generally say is that there is no burden of proof on me because i'm not making any claim you're the one making the claim that god exists i'm not saying god doesn't exist i'm just saying i don't have enough evidence so you're the one who has to provide me with the evidence but the reality is that if they are saying that they are withholding belief in god because they don't have enough evidence for the existence of God, then what they are implicitly saying is that it is at least possible for a universe to exist without God. And that itself is a claim which they have to support with evidence, whether they like it or not. But then they'll say, no, a purely materialistic universe is the default position. But that itself is a subjective claim which we can just outright reject. So there really is only a binary option here. Either a purely materialistic universe is able to exist on its own, or it requires the supernatural, a form of God slash creator. So let's look at the scientific evidence and see which of these two positions are best supported. So first of all, we know that the universe has a beginning. Every drop of scientific evidence supports this. We see the second law of thermodynamics that the universe is running down and, and in order for something to run down, it must have started at some point. We also know that the universe is expanding. The Hubble telescope confirmed this years ago and it's expanding from a single point, which means that it can be contracted back to a single point. We also see things like radiation echo, temperature ripples, and also Einstein's theory of relativity that the universe has a beginning and was not eternal like he thought. Einstein disliked the results so much that he added a fudge factor into his theory to allow for an eternal universe. He later admitted his error as the biggest blunder of my life. So in conclusion, we see that all the scientific evidence points to the fact that the universe had a beginning just as the Bible states, and the science is consistent with a Genesis account. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you believe that something just magically exploded out of nothing, well, give me one scientific piece of evidence where any explosion has caused order and not chaos. You can't because it's not scientific. Someone might say, well, something else existed prior to the Big Bang, but this belief isn't based on the science. This is a faith-based philosophical attempt to try to replace the God that was required for the Big Bang to occur. The cosmological argument goes like this. The universe had a beginning. Whatever has a beginning has a cause. So what is the cause? If space, time and matter had a beginning, then what created space, time and matter cannot be made of space, time and matter itself because that did not exist. So the cause must be spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful to be able to create, intelligent, and also personal to be able to choose to create. Does that sound like anyone you know? If you study science deep enough and long enough, it will force you to believe in God. Atheists might say, well, I don't believe that something came from nothing, but it doesn't matter what they claim to believe. What matters is the implication of their belief. And if you remove God, this is all that you're left with. We even see desperate attempts to try to redefine nothing as something other than nothing. It is literally nothing. Of course, common sense doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. It is literally nothing. It is literally something nothing. Well, you can right. dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever it is, it's very, very simple. Yeah. And <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> How foolish and desperate people become to try to explain away the existence of God. And some will even try to use metaphysics to say that things can pop into existence out of nothing. But what they don't realise is that actually requires the scientific laws to exist in the first place. That's not nothing. One thing that also points to God's existence is the fine tuning of the universe. The universe very much appears to have been arranged to allow for intelligent life. And modern physics recognises a set of universal constants and even the tiniest of changes in one of these constants would not allow life to exist or even most forms of matter as well. The chance of this universe being fine-tuned like this by accident is estimated at 1 in 10 to the power of 120. That's a lot of zeros. Given that the chance of winning the lotto is 1 in 10 to the power of 9. And atheists say that this happened by coincidence. 
well, I don't have enough faith to believe in that. Sorry, I'm going to need more evidence. The fine tuning of the universe clearly points to a higher power that deliberately chose this arrangement. One issue for a universe without God is also the fact of DNA and intelligent information. Give me one scientific example of intelligent information not coming from an intelligent mind. Just one example. You can't. Whether looking at the section of a book or computer software, if you have intelligent information and you can trace it back to its source, invariably you come to an intelligent mind. Therefore, when you find information transcribed along the backbone of the DNA molecule in the cell, the most rational inference based on repeated experience is that an intelligence of some form played a role in the origin of this information. No one would possibly in their right mind say that Mount Rushmore formed by accident, by the natural elements taking effect upon it. That would be ridiculous. People would laugh at you. But how much more complex is the information contained in our DNA? The late Sir Fred Hoyle, who was professor of astronomy at Cambridge University and was not a Christian, illustrated the point this way. Now imagine 10 to the power of 50 blind persons. That's 100,000 billion, 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 billion people standing shoulder to shoulder. They would more than fill our entire planetary system, each with a scrambled Rubik cube and trying to conceive of the chance of all of them simultaneously arriving at the solved form. You then have the chance of arriving by random shuffling, random variation of just one of the many biopolymers on which life depends. The notion that not only the biopolymers, but the operating program of a living cell could be arrived at by chance in a primordial soup here on Earth is evidently nonsense of a high order. Can you give me just one example of intelligent information not coming from an intelligent mind? You can't. It's impossible. It's not supported by science. So why would you believe that? We can look around us and see the evidence for the existence of God. It's very plain. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so they are without excuse. You look at a painting, how do you know a painter was there? Because of the painting. You look at a, a, a building and you know that a builder was there. You can look at creation and you can know that a creator was there. It really is that simple and obvious, but people want to deny that. Many proponents of evolution will state that evolution is a fact of science, but this cannot be further from the truth. There are numerous problems with this theory that are at odds with science. Laboratory studies have shown that organisms are capable of adaptation, the ability to shift their biology to fit their environment. These small changes are called microevolution. However, those same studies have shown that this can only go so far. A dog can change to another type of dog, but there's no evidence to suggest that a certain kind of animal can change beyond its own genetic limits and become something else. Microevolution turns a wolf into a chihuahua or a Great Dane. This is scientific. Macroevolution turns a fish into a cow. This is completely unscientific. Macroevolution has some major scientific impossibilities and hurdles, including irreducible complexity, the lack of transitional fossils, and much more. The reason why macroevolution is unscientific is that there is no known way for entirely new genetic information to be added to a genome as macroevolution requires. Duplications and mutations do not add new information to the genome. Duplications are the result of duplicating existing genetic information and mutations alter existing genetic information. Neither of them adds new information. What they really can't account for is the buildup of information. One has not found a single mutation that one can point at that actually adds information. In fact, every beneficial mutation that I have seen reduces the information, it loses information. Give me just one scientific example of an increase in information. You can't because it's not scientific. If you believe that a universe is possible without God, then you have to believe that life came from non-life. Give me one scientific example, please, just one of life coming from non-life. You can't because life comes from life 
100% of the time. People will point to abiogenesis, the original evolution of life or living organisms from inorganic or inanimate substances. This is an interesting theory in one's mind, but that's all it is, an idea. It cannot be scientifically demonstrated. Others will point to the Miller-Urey experiment, which was a simulation of conditions of the early Earth, testing the idea that life, or more specifically, organic molecules could have formed by nothing more than simple chemical reactions. But the problem is that this only brought about the arise of organic compounds, not life itself. If this is the best evidence you have, then you are in big, big trouble. Non-living things coming to life is the stuff of science fiction, not of science. And all life had to have come from a source of life. And God is the source of all life. Another problem with the possibility of a universe without God is the rational that we observe around us. Give me one scientific example of the rational coming from the irrational. You can't. If our brain is restricted to the physical laws of physics and chemistry, then all that it is is one chemical state changing to another. It's determinism. And anything that you say, any argument you put up, I could say to you, your brain made you do that. You're not actually thinking yourself. It's just your chemistry that's controlling you. So what's the point of us even talking? And if that's the case, you can't even trust the system that is giving you these thoughts. So as I said, atheists will try to frame a debate in the form that, well, I'm not making any claim, you're making the claim, so you have to support your claim. But like I said, if they're saying that there's even a possibility that there's not enough evidence for God, that a universe could even possibly exist without God, then they have to provide the evidence to show how this is possible from the science available. And looking at all of this, I can see clearly why they would want to shirk the burden of proof because they don't have any evidence that can support the possibility even of a universe without God. All the science actually flies in the face of this. Also note that in this video, I'm not talking about evidence for the Christian God, I'm talking about the evidence for a creator God. Talking about the evidence for who God is would be a topic for another video and then we could explore things like biblical prophecy, the resurrection, the reliability of biblical accounts. Another thing that atheists will say is that this isn't actually evidence for God, this is just God of the gaps. Because you can't explain things, you're, you're filling in the gaps with God. But this isn't true. This is evidence that actually points to the fact that, that, that a supernatural being is required in the explanation of the universe. God has intentionally designed the universe in this way so that it points back to him and definitively testifies of his existence. This is so unmistakable. One would have to choose to close their eyes and put their fingers in their ears not to see this. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. And what atheists are actually doing is science of the gap, pseudoscience of the gap. They're saying, well, if we wait long enough, then there will be enough evidence that will be able to explain these things. And many atheists will say, well, I simply don't know. I'm humble enough to say that I don't know. But it's not an issue of saying I don't know. The scientific evidence actually contradicts the position that a universe could even exist without the possibility of God. And many scientists have many things to say on this issue and they will forcefully try to push the fact that things like evolution are a fact and all of this other nonsense, that something can come from nothing, but nonsense spoken by scientists is still nonsense. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. I cannot believe in what completely flies in the face of all of the available evidence. Atheists will try to frame this whole debate with this false dichotomy of science um, versus the unscientific, the intellectual versus the unintellectual, the rational versus the irrational, but that is a false dichotomy. And I'm gonna stand on the side of the great scientists like Isaac Newton and Michael Faraday and many other scientists who believed in God and even who some of them who specifically believed in the Christian God. This isn't a, a, a matter of the science versus faith versus the unscientific, the intellectual versus the unintellectual. This is a matter of looking at the evidence and going wherever the evidence points, no matter how uncomfortable that makes you feel. Labeling these things as science, chanting mantras that it's a scientific fact, just like a Buddhist monk just chanting those mantras doesn't actually make it science. It doesn't make it science any more than me saying that I am the Incredible Hulk and that's a fact makes me the Incredible Hulk. It's nonsense. I find when I'm discussing things with atheists, they become very uncomfortable when they are the ones who are having to answer the questions. 
Give me one example of life coming from non-life. There's not one. There's not one example of intelligent information not coming from an intelligent mind, of something coming from nothing, of the rational coming from the irrational. And this just exposes the fact that their position is not based on science, testable, observable, repeatable. It's based on pseudoscience and philosophy so that they can desperately try to avoid the obvious, that is, that God exists. Friends, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications. If you want to learn more about who this God is, then this is the channel for you. If you feel led to partner with this ministry, there are links in the description below. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.